Hi. Today I'm going to show you how to edit panoramas non-destructively in Affinity Photo. Those of you coming from Photoshop know that in Photoshop, when you create a panorama, the program creates a set of layers and masks. That way, if you want to make a change later to how the masking was done between two pictures, it's easy enough to change that. In Affinity Photo, the default panorama tool doesn't do this. The way it works is covered by a lot of videos, but I'll show you how it works here. You click File, New Panorama, and in the dialog box you add your pictures, and then you click Stitch Panorama, and when it's done, you click OK. When it's done rendering, you can make some tweaks to the masks and the alignment, but ultimately you have to click Apply in the top left corner, which is a destructive operation that finalizes any changes you've made and rasterizes the panorama as a single pixel layer. Now this looks fine from out here, but if later we're doing some fine edits and we notice that there are some problems with the masking, such as these dark spots by these lights, or this line here, it's impossible to make any changes without starting from scratch. So instead of using the panorama tool, we're going to use the stack tool, which allows us to mimic Photoshop's panorama stitching tool to an extent. We're going to start off by clicking File, New Stack. Then in the dialog box, we're going to add our pictures, make sure Automatically Align Images is checked and use Perspective Alignment, which I found does a better job than the other option. The most important thing here is that we also check the Live Alignment box, because if we don't, we end up with a canvas that's only as big as one of the base pictures, and we don't retain the Perspective Transformation information, which you can modify later. Now we have a stack with the pictures properly aligned like we saw in the Panorama tool. Here there are a couple of approaches, like you can set the function to be median or max to let it automatically blend pictures together. I find that max is useful if your source pictures have some vignetting that you didn't bother correcting earlier, as it will use the brighter of two images at points where they overlap. One thing to note here is that the images aren't masked together yet. With this system, we're going to have to make the masks ourselves. What I like to do here is first get rid of the stack group, and then create a new group called Panorama. Then we draw the mask from the bottom layer to the top layer. We're going to make all the images partially transparent so that we can see which parts overlap, and then simply start from the bottom layer and mask in the above layers. Show the layer you want to mask in and the ones below it, and then press Q to turn on the Quick Mask tool. Then, use a white brush to paint over the areas of the image that you want to mask over the bottom layers. Select the layer and click the little mask button and use Ctrl D to deselect the portion of the canvas. You might need to look at the composite alpha channel or the individual masks to make sure you didn't leave any holes. I should point out that there are a couple drawbacks to this system. Sometimes this method isn't as good as Affinity Photo's panorama tool when it comes to aligning all of your images. Most of the time it works, but sometimes layer alignment fails to place a picture, and you have to use a perspective transform to place that image yourself. Also, it sometimes creates images that are more distorted than what the panorama tool generates. So you need to duplicate your group and rasterize it as a pixel layer, and then apply a warp transformation to correct for any distortion. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and thanks for watching.